All right, y'all, so I have this doohickey cookout, the square mold. I've always wanted to make like a perfectly square molded egg sandwich. So I'm gonna see how this works. I might have to make two and stack them to make it thick enough. But yeah, I wanna make a nice, just one little delicious egg sandwich. I have something in mind. So we'll watch it come together here. So first things first, I wanna crack and beat an egg in this beautiful whatever dish this is with my tiny little beaten fork. And I'm gonna see if this fills up that mold, but it might actually require two now that I look at this. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I should actually add just a tiny bit of uh, cream to fluff it up. I don't know if any of you guys do that. A little cream, a little milk, something just to make it a little more fluffy. Okay, now I want to see where we get with the mold, how much. Oh yeah, one's perfect. All right. That should be great. Fire this guy up, probably pretty low. Every time I'm cooking, I, I always want to be like Gordon Ramsay, like he's very like, pan, on, flame, low, pan, on. <laughs> now we bring the mold to the pan on and let that cook through there. I'm really intrigued to understand if it's gonna like just burn from the bottom and not be able to come out. I probably should have buttered that thing, but oh well. I guess we'll see as it goes. So in the meantime, while that's happening, I have some whipped cream cheese here and this basil tube paste thing. And I wanna make, I just wanna whip it together just cause it just makes sense to me in my mind. But this is gonna go on the sando. Another baby fork and just work, work it in. We're working it out. But yeah, just a little pesto cream cheese, if you will. On, pan on. <laughs> Pesto in, whipping cream cheese in. It's cheese, grommet. <laughs> Is Gordon Ramsay uh, Wallace? Might be. Okay, let's take a test just to see if it's pesto -y enough. It is, it's perfect. Pesto cream cheese. So while this is happening and we have all this extra room, I just want to blister off some cherry tomatoes as well. Might as well multi-purpose and make like a little jam. Just cook these down basically. She's gonna blow <laughs> Dante's peak of eggs. Uh, it does seem to be cooking along nicely, but I am afraid it's gonna come out of the, that mold. It's like really expanding, but maybe we need to poke it. Okay, another clean mini fork. There we go, that's all we needed to do. And it's just a little touch. Na, 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 na. Whatever that song was back in the day. Women in songs. Okay, got it. Cooking show, women in songs. This experiment is that I kind of knew this would happen. I feel like I can kind of smell like a bit of a burnt egg on the bottom essentially, but not like burnt burnt, but you know what I mean? Like it's got that dark, like the brown spots or whatever. And then the top's kind of having a little trouble cooking. We'll see what this comes to, but it could be a fail, but I'm hoping for the best. Okay, so the top is a touch goopy, but I don't want to go too much further because I just know that this undercarriage here is definitely getting crisp. Like, it's definitely probably pretty dark. It's probably, yeah, I can already see it. But uh, this is a, a mission in learning. This is what cooking is all about. Like, just dicking around because you might stumble upon a great mistake. So... I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get this out of here because I should have acted. Me on a mystical adventure of will it come out. It did, but like I said, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. The kind of burnt, not burnt, cooked, thoroughly cooked, we'll call it. So what would a bougie egg sandwich be with the cheapest of and richest of breads? Because, I mean, it's rich in deliciousness, but...
cheap in its nature. Damn, that's already browning. Well, that's not great, but oh well. It is what it is. We just do what we do is around here. That's not fantastic. I don't, I don't love that. But hey, you know what? We're just going to do it anyways. Hey, though, came out not bad. Can't complain for that. She's toasty. Golden. So it worked. Success. Yes. Okay, so I know there's this cream cheese pasta going on here, but and this is supposed to be bougie, but we're gonna keep it a little, you know. We're gonna keep it a little bit non-bouge, and uh, we're gonna melt, of course, a double layer of cheds. And also, by the way, if you didn't know this by now, I did double up, I made two of these boys. And girls, sorry, PC life, everybody's equal, my bad, didn't mean to do it, don't cancel me, thank you. So we're gonna melt those. Pineapple Express coming right up. Hello, my friends. I'm here to take you on the express train to the flavor realm. Over here. Mm. Well, if it isn't that time, time to build, time to construct, Bob the Builder, Build-A-Bear. What is Build-A-Bear, by the way? Any Americans, I think it's a thing in the, in the States, maybe? I don't know. So. First layer down equals pesto cream cheese. Yeah, right? Not too thick, not too thin. Next up, got our double stack cheesy leather face eggs. Oh, it works a little too perfect, my friend. Wow, didn't see they even see that coming. Okay, next, we got the charred white person ketchup, bougie white person ketchup, because, you know, like I said, we gotta catch up everything when it comes to these breakfast foods. Just stack her in there real nice. Not too much liquid. There is a lot of liquid that comes off this, by the way. So, I think that's good. And uh, lastly, I wanna finish with uh, just some arugula, arugula, however you wanna say it. You can pronounce that you or not pronounce the you or Whatever, okay. Just gonna move this away for a hot sec. On, over. <laughs> Pesto cream cheese, on. Okay, Gordon, I get it. I would like Gordon to taste this because I've never tasted it, so we could taste it together. I think Gordon may be low-key impressed. I can already tell it's probably gonna work, but we'll see. Slide back, top, on. Okay, I guess after the uh, the close-up inspection, the other close-up inspection is to have a triangular cut, of course. Cross-section interior look. Mm -hmm. We open her up and see what we're working with. Could be good, might be nice. I don't know, we'll have to see. I think she looks pretty decent. But meet me at the table for a try. <laughs> All right, let's get a bite of this. Also, just thank you for coming along uh, with me on this bougie egg sandwich adventure. Uh, if I'm being absolutely, completely real honest with you, this is the only, basically the only things I really had in my house. Like I was just laying down thinking like, I need to eat something. I don't have much, but what could I make bougie with what I got? So this is what I came up with. and. To be honest, I think it's going to be amazing. I could smell the pesto. I could smell the arugula really permeating. Uh, I wish that I was able to get those eggs not like leather face, you know, but outside of that, I think it should be really good. smirk tells it all holy crap mm. whoa that's crazy
That's crazy. So what's happening is the peppery, the arugula, very prominent, complimentary as fuck. Um, what happened with the cream cheese was is the heat from the other things has like made it so it's like creamy. The pesto is coming through. The white people catch up the acidity from the tomatoes, that char, it's got the char and like the acidity from the tomato is cutting through the richness of the cheese, the egg, the, uh, the other cheese, the marble cheese. And uh, I'm not gonna lie. Though the egg didn't come out the way I intended it to, like perfectly with no, that non non burning Sanders aspect to it. I gotta tell you, um, it lends like a flavor. It lends like this like uh, it just works in the profile, which I it's not that I didn't expect it. I in my head I thought maybe it would. It's not at all off-putting because look, most of the egg is very perfectly cooked and, and like fluffy and shit, but there's that very thin layer of that like burntish egg, but almost like the char on the tomato. It adds that aspect, it's like the char on the egg. And also, there's like, one part of me knows there's no better bread for like, a, like an egg sandwich than like a simple, just white bread. And then one part of me was like, this sandwich seems so bougie that it would need a bougie bread. But after hitting it with butter and that in there, like it's perfect, it's not, it's not the wrong bread at all. It's really the right bread. It's light, it's fluffy. It gets the job done. Like it's not, it's complimentary. I didn't take away. It's not too much. It just houses the items that matter. That's what a good bread should do. It shouldn't override the sandwich. Like both in like, or both maybe triple, triple. Like in density and texture and, and in flavor. Like brioche sometimes is too much on certain things. Like you have to match brioche with the right shit for it to actually properly work. Because brioche is rich as shit. So you can't put rich shit in brioche. I mean you can if you offset it right, but I, I don't know. That was that was actually Jesus Christ. Again, in vain. No, uh that was incredible. If you have the ingredients, make it at home. It's simple. Without the filming aspect of it, this, it took X amount of time. Like it wasn't even that long, but like you could whip this in like literally 10 minutes, not even, well, 10 minutes, probably about 10 minutes. Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, sweat true. Cause it's so hot out today where I'm at. Peace.